Hello, everyone, and good evening. This is uh, the fourth of six Bedtime Nature Stories. And we're excited to have you here. Tonight's storyteller is Lori, who is a park interpreter. Um, but before she gets started, I just wanted to encourage everyone to drop on by and say hello in the chat. We would love to hear from you. Uh, just a reminder that when you go into the chat, you will have to change the setting from um, all panelists to all panelists and all attendees. And if you do that, then everyone will be able to see your comments. And we do love to hear from people. I'd love to know how old you are or where you um, are dialing in from tonight. It's always a lot of fun for us to see different people who come by. And I know that at this point in time, there's a number of people who come by quite regularly too. So uh, if you've been here before, you know that you're in for a treat. And every interpreter, every storyteller has taken a very unique approach. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Lori does tonight. Um, it's a lot of fun and we have a great story, the chickadee and the fir tree. I saw the chickadees flittering around in my garden tonight. So I'm really interested to see what Lori has to share with us. Um, so before we begin, I always like to introduce myself. My name is Janet Antonio, and I am the Executive Director of the Pacific Parklands Foundation. And at the Pacific Parklands Foundation, we've been running for about 20 years, and we really do everything we can to support Metro Vancouver Regional Parks. And part of what we'd like to do is connect people with nature. So having the chance to have you join us tonight and learning about chickadees and other things going on in nature is always a lot of fun for us. So I can see that we have quite a few participants already. Um, and before I begin, I also always like to, to comment um, about the fact that long before my house was built, long before we had parks, this land was, was already um, home to a number of people. And this is, Metro Vancouver is actually the territorial home of the Coast Salish people. And as you go out in the woods and as you look around the world that we, we're lucky enough to live in, it's always, it was always a good time to just pause and to be grateful and to remember and to, to just respect the world we live in and, and value the fact that we get to share it with everyone. So um, with that, I'm going to just um, introduce Lori right now. Um, so Lori, if you can join us. Uh, Lori has a great story to tell us, and uh, welcome, Lori, and I will now turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, for this evening's story, I will be in the role of Mother Nature. So, hence my wonderful costume this evening and my lovely crown. So, let's begin. I thought um, the name of the story is The Chickadee and the Fir Tree, but I thought we could start off with um, a little bit about chickadees first, since it is the main character in this story. So let's move to the next slide, and then we can see, oh, and here it is, one of my most favorite little birds, the black-capped chickadee. I'm sure many of you have seen them out and about, and any time it's dry, I just have to open my door and I can hear the beautiful song of the little black cap chickadee. I have a few questions to see what you know about chickadees before the story begins. So let's move to the next slide and see what they are. All right. So here's a good one. What is the common sound you will hear a chickadee make to attract a female or to defend a territory? Is it the chickadee dee sound? Is it the do re mi sound? Or is it the dee dee dee, dee dee dee? We're gonna have a poll for you to fill out and we'll see what your answer is. Take a few seconds. What sound? Will you hear a chickadee make? Hmm. Hi, I'm Jeff and I'm tech support. I'm like the Wizard of Oz in the background. You can't see me. So I'm helping Lori with the polls. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. 
We can see if you, um, maybe like 10 more seconds to vote or are people done? Are people still deciding? We gave them quite a few choices. Okay. Oh, people are still deciding. Okay, I'm gonna close the polling now and share the results. Let's take a look. Well, look at this. Well, you know what? You were correct in that chickadees do actually, well, they get their name from one of their most common songs, which is the chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. But in the winter time, the late winter, and in the spring, you actually will hear them making the Phoebe Bee call because that's the call they use to say, this is my home, this is my place. And it's also the call that they'll use when they want to look for a girlfriend or a mate. That's the song that the male will use. We're gonna have a chance to actually listen to the sound now that they make when they're looking for a mate or defending territory. We're gonna listen next, we'll move to the next slide and find out what that sounds like. Okay. So the truth is, Chickadees can make a whole variety of sounds. So if you said chickadee dee, you were correct. But if you were wanting to answer the question about them looking for a mate or defending their where they are hanging out, it's the fee dee dee. But when you heard that song, I don't know if you heard it, but I think it sounds like it's saying cheeseburger, cheeseburger. And I can't help but think, maybe they're trying to invite a mate to go for a cheeseburger. Anyway, when you're out there any day right about now, take some time and listen and you might get to hear the sound. Let's move on to the next slide. The beautiful little chickadee. Whoops, we went ahead one too many. Let's go back to the quiz two. Now what do chickadees eat? Well, if you feed chickadees, you probably already know that because some people have bird feeders. Let's take a look at the answers. It could be insects. Is that what they eat? Do they eat seeds? Or do they eat spiders? You're gonna get a chance to check off whichever ones you think they eat. Let's go to the polls. Okay, Jeff, let's go to the polls. Oh, one second, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. So you can click on as many as, as that apply. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. People are fast on the draw. Ooh. With this one. Okay, I'm gonna give you five more seconds if you haven't chosen yet. And then I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. Okay, I guess that's it. All right, let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Well, it was kind of a giveaway with the picture, but yes, they do eat insects. They do eat seeds as well. And they also actually eat a lot of spiders and even the spider little sacks that have eggs in them this time of year. So if you ticked off any of those things, you were correct, but they actually eat all of them. They have to kind of keep a variety in their diet because in the winter it gets a little bit harder to find things. And if you look closely at the picture, you're gonna see that there's a little green caterpillar in the mouth of the chickadee in this picture. All right, so we have one more question for you tonight. Sounds like you already know a lot about chickadees. So how do chickadees survive when it gets really cold? We've had a little bit of cold and snowy weather, haven't we? So how do they survive in cold winter weather? Do they 
Number one or A, fly south. B, they find holes in the ground and crawl in at night. Or do they find old woodpecker nests or holes in dying trees and go inside for the night? We'll bring up the poll and you can answer. What do you think? Which one of these could it be? Yep, people are voting quickly again. Nice. Yeah, they're getting good at this. I think they've done it before. Yeah, I think people might be done. Any last votes? Oh, one more. Oh, two more. Okay, I'm going to end the polling now. Okay. Let's take a look. So they don't fly south. Actually, they stay here. That's why we can hear them and see them all winter long. Do they find holes in the ground and crawl in there? It's an interesting idea, but they'd be a whole lot safer up in a tree. So they will find old woodpecker nests or holes in dying trees and they actually will go inside for the night. And sometimes they'll even gather with other little chickadees because then you can stay extra warm. All right, let's move to the next slide. And we're going to begin our story in just a few seconds. It's called The Chickadee and the Fir Tree. It's adapted from Why the Evergreen Trees Keep Their Leaves in Winter. And the story is by Florence Hallbrook. Let the story begin. Now, once upon a time, a very, very long time ago, there was a little chickadee. Sorry, just one second, Janet. Can you close the, the slideshow? Sorry, there we go. There we go. Oh, now hi. we have full you in full glory. There Thank we go. you so much. Yeah. So let's begin again. Once upon a time, a very long time ago, there was a little chickadee. And this little chickadee decided, I'm going to stay all winter long around here this year. I'm not going to fly south with the other birds. So the chickadee was very happy with itself and it thought that's what it'll do. Let's see what happens. Now, little chickadee was doing really fine in the late fall and early winter, but the temperature changed and it started getting really cold out there. So the little chickadee was like, ooh, ooh, it's getting really cold out. Mm, I'm going to have to find a place where I can get a little bit of warmth and snuggle up. So he flew into the forest and looked around for a place to find a little bit of warmth. Now, the first thing that the little chickadee found was a birch tree. So, mm, tucked all into the birch tree. And when he just got all, all nestled in and felt kind of cozy, the birch tree woke up and went, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Get out of my little bits of leaves. Get out, get out you little bird. Oh, oh. Um, hi, birch tree. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know you were there. Um, I was just a little bit cold and I decided um, maybe I could just spend a little bit of time in what's left of your leaves because it felt kind of warm. Do you think that I could do that? And the birch tree said, absolutely not. I do not want to have a dirty little bird on my beautiful white bark. You'll have to find somewhere else. Now, be off with you. Aww. And off flew the little chickadee. It was kind of upset because the birch tree had not been very kind. Now, he looked around the forest a little bit more, took a look over there, took a look over there, took a look over there. Hmm, 
And then the little birch tree spied something that looked really good. He found a little log and he thought, oh, look at that. There's a little hole right in the top of the log. I could just fit in there and snuggle up on a cold winter night. So in went the little chickadee. Oh, and it felt pretty nice when all of a sudden, oh, 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 what do you think you're doing? And there, ah, oh, I'm so sorry, little owl. Um, I didn't know you were down in that hole. Well, this is my little bit of a tree, and I do not have room for you. You will have to find your own place to spend the winter. Be off now. Aww. The poor little chickadee was not very happy at all. My goodness, just innocently went into the log to try and find a place for, to snuggle up for a cold winter night. Jeepers, this is proving to be so much harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> I might never find a, a nice place to, like, you know, find a warm little bit in a tree. <laughs> now, a beautiful Douglas fir tree happened to hear the little chickadee crying. And the tree said, hello. And the little chickadee went, hi. <laughs> And the little tree said, well, my goodness, you need to wipe away those big raindrop tears. What's, what's so terrible? What's happening? Well, I decided to stay for the whole winter, and, but I need a place to like, you know, spend the cold winter nights because it's so oh, cold out there. Um, and I went to a birch tree and, and it said, I couldn't stay there. And then I flew into a log and, and there was an owl in it and it hooed me away. So I'm really hoping that you might let me, um, like maybe I could stay in, in your green leaves for the winter. Absolutely you could. You just come right in to my nice warm, green, evergreen boughs, and you can snuggle right in. So the little chickadee snuggled into the Douglas fir tree and went, oh, this feels so nice. You can spend every evening just snuggled up inside of any of my branches. And guess what? What? Well, there actually is insects that live around my branches as well. So if you get hungry, you can eat some of those insects. Yippee! Oh, that is so kind of you. Uh, oh, how can I ever thank you? Well, Mother Nature, that's me, was watching the story unfold. And she was so pleased that the fir tree had been so kind and welcoming to the little, little chickadee that she decided I should do something really nice for the fir trees. Maybe I'll be nice to some of the other trees as well, like the spruce and the cedar, mm, and maybe even the Western hemlock. Yes, I shall be nice to all those trees because they were friendly and especially that fir tree let the little chickadee nestle right into its leaves. So from that time forward, she declared that all of the trees that were kind to the little birds would stay evergreen all year long. And to this very day, the Douglas firs stay green year round. And that is the end of the story. You have a good night, everybody, and thank you. Bye-bye.
We actually have some time for some questions. If anybody okay. wants to uh, gain, that's Jeff in the background here doing background tech. So if you want to type in um, any questions, we have about 10 minutes left. Is that all right, Laurie? Abs. Thank you. That story Excuse was me. awesome. You had me mesmerized. But if you want to have any questions, you can um, just type them in the chat box and Laurie will answer them. Well, Laurie, I'm, I had a question before anyone else jumps in. Yes. Um, I heard today that it's especially important not to um, scare or chase birds in the winter time because they 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 need their energy for food is uh, for more energy because there's less food in the winter time. Is that is that true? It's very true. You can imagine we're so fortunate we can go to the grocery store when we want to have a snack or have have a meal, but little chickadees. Well, they can't go to the grocery store. How would they push the carts? And they don't have any money. So imagine if you were a little bird living outside and you were looking for some seeds or some little insects. And while you were looking, somebody might come up and go, shoo, or might go, whoa, it's a bird. Well, you might have to use a lot of energy to fly away. And then you have to look for food somewhere else. It's a really good idea if you see birds to try and be as quiet and as still as you can. I always tell my friends, try to be as quiet as a tree. <laughs> that is great advice. I, I also noticed that we have uh, Elizabeth um, um, and, and uh, Will from Revelstoke here. Do chickadees make it all the way up to there? That's a good question. Can they tell me, have they seen any? Maybe around their backyard? I want to know. I don't I hope so, but well, I'm well, not sure. Well, we give them a chance to, to, to answer that question. I don't know if, uh, if uh, Elizabeth and Will would know that. Uh, Stephanie has a question for us. Do we have different kinds of chickadees in BC? Yes, we absolutely do. And another one that I've commonly seen around, seen around here is the chestnut. Well, actually, little further up the mountains, but is called the chestnut backed chickadee. And instead of having this black and grayish bit, it actually has kind of a rusty brown bit on the back. And when I've heard them sing, and you could look this up yourself, this is what it sounds like to me. While the little black cap chickadees go chickadee dee, I find that the chestnut backs are more dee 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 dee. That's just the way my ears hear it. All right. That sounds fantastic. And um, Stephanie says, yes, I, I believe Stephanie's from Revelstoke, but yes, they do uh, see chickadees as well. I was very hopeful that you would because they just brighten your day to see a little chickadee. So Estelle has heard that chickadees are getting sick this year at bird feeders and that we shouldn't use our bird feeder. Is that true? You know what? Yes, yeah, sadly, um, this has happened not so, just in the recent last month or so, there is something called salmonella that really can upset a little bird's stomach. And uh, if you don't regularly clean out your bird feeder, and I mean give it a really good scrubbing with some boiling hot water, those little bacteria can grow in some of the seeds that rot and get wet in the bottom of your bird feeder. So they're actually encouraging people to take down your bird feeders for now. And while you might think, oh, that's not nice because you know what, maybe those little chickadees are really relying on me. It's really nice for chickadees to be able to get some extra food from you, but they are very good at finding their own food. And I'll tell you another thing, chickadees will often take the seeds that people put out and they will cache them. And by caching, I mean, they actually hide them all over the woods and all around the, in little, little kind of cracks in the trees. So they can still go back to those places because they've got a good memory and they will be able to find food. So if you can't really scrub your bird feeder on a regular basis, you might want to take it down. That's a good, that's a good point. They're smart birds. Um, Terry has asked, they, she uh, writes, uh, we put a bird bath out in the summer and the chickadees like to visit. Well, that sounds like fun. I would love to see a yes, video of that. Yes. 
and asks, are there any plants or flowers that chickadees especially like that we could add to our garden? That's a great thing. You know, there's lots of good, good um, resources that you could probably look up to find out more about that. But I do know that um, chickadees will sometimes eat fruit. So maybe if you planted some huckleberries or blueberries, they might like that. But they also really like seeds. And I'm not sure what I would suggest that's kind of seedy. But do you know, I have a cherry tree, I'm just thinking about this, not far from me, and I see chickadees on it a lot. So I can't help but think maybe there's some insects in that tree that they like to eat. But I know wherever you have a lot of little shrubs, I think there's a lot of little bugs in there, and I've seen lots of chickadees. So plant some more shrubs. Those are trees that don't grow very tall at all. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And I think we have uh, time for one last question, and this will be okay. from Johnny, uh, who asks, how many chickadees do we have left? How many? You know what? I'm not sure how many chickadees we have left, but everywhere that Mother Nature was outside today, she heard chickadees calling. So I couldn't give you the exact number, but I hear them around apartment buildings. I hear them in the forest. I hear them outside of my home. So my guess is chickadees are actually doing really well and there seems to be quite a lot of them. Let's hope we keep it that way. Indeed. Well, those are a lot of great questions and I'm just gonna put on the screen what we're going to be having um, next week. But I wanna say thank you so much because that was a wonderful story and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I love chickadees as well. And so as uh, we get ready to say goodnight and we say goodnight to all the kids and the parents, um, you know, when my children were little, I would tuck them into bed and pretend that they were various, various things from sandwiches to chickmunks. And so moms and dads tonight, you could tuck your little chickadees into bed and pretend that you're, you know, an evergreen tree inspired by mother nature. So Lori, thank you so much. And You're everyone so else, we hope to see you next week for the fifth, which will be uh, Woodpecker Makes a High Rise. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so much. And I'd just like to say, when you can, come and take a walk in a regional park and maybe you'll hear some chickadees. Bye-bye. Bye, Lori. Thank you so much.